On today's Locked on Jayhawks, we got voice of the Jayhawks, Brian Haney, to talk about this week's Rock Chalk Round Ball Classic. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can find me on Twitter at D Johnson Radio, and you can find our show here with Locked On Jayhawks anywhere you get your podcast, including on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. And on today's edition of the show, we're talking with Voice of the Jayhawks, Brian Haney, as we're going to be talking about the Rock Chalk Round Ball Classic. This is like my favorite KU event every year. Uh, there's always a lot of great ones, but um, with what it means to the community and everything, uh, a lot of ways that you can help out. Lots going on. Lots of former players going to be in town. We're going to talk all about it on this episode of the show, which is brought to you by Game Time. You can visit Game Time, download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply with Game Time. All right, we're going to bring in voice of the Jayhawks here, Brian Haney, who comes on the show here, Rock Chalk Round Ball Classic Week, which I appreciate you hopping on here because it is a busy, hectic week for you and everything. Uh, first things first, what what round ball is this? I've, I've almost lost count. I mean, it's it's over a decade at this point. What number are we on? I know you know the answer because you are the ultimate round ball classic historian. No one has ever kept tabs on stats and facts and figures and trends within the game like the great Derek Johnson. So you're just doing that to set me up to be able to talk about this being our 16th year and it started <laughs> back in 2009. I wanted to give you some praise, though, because in all your years of hosting Rock Chalk Sports Talk, each year you would have the updated stats and you would throw out round ball classic trivia questions and you know career highs this and all-time records that and it got me to thinking as you were doing the intro if the 2000 some subscribers to this locked on podcast would really get behind this idea over the next 12 months i think we need to find a way to get the historian in the game himself so oh if gosh. somebody one of your viewers would would pledge you know if we if we had every viewer on this podcast pledge a dollar get Derek Johnson in the game next year and oh, we can give all that money to pediatric cancer we'll put you on the floor with Devonte Graham and Grady Dick and whoever and then you can yourself be in the box score and in that all-time wow. stat how about that that would be uh it, it would be an honor it would also probably be very embarrassing because of what would happen with me going against the other players but if if anybody's willing to like donate because again this is a great cause and if you're new to this event we've got a magnificent seven which i'll mention this again later in the show um but you can correct me if i have any of these names uh, pronou uh, pronounced wrong but azel bryant calvin smith isaac reynolds kira whiting lucas kraminga owen ragsdale and rowdy campbell and uh, again, if you're new to the event, we have these families whose uh, basically medical bills are very expensive when you have kids that, and, and I have a, a newborn and, and hasn't taken that for, for this event to touch me, but it becomes, I think, a little bit more real when you do have a kid and can see what some of these other families and these children are going through, which, which obviously you don't wish upon anybody and any support and help we can have. And so uh, that's what makes this event so cool that you have all these players back and you have this awesome game, you have this show, but obviously it's more than that. There's the bowling event, there's the dinner and everything else that goes on. Um, but with the game itself, that's coming on Thursday, I guess we should plug that right now. You can still get your tickets uh, for that at 23rd street brewery in Lawrence, Johnny's Tavern on Fairlawn and Topeka. You can go to the uh, Johnny's Tavern at Corinth square in Prairie village, the Johnny's Tavern in Olathe on K 10 and Ridgeview and the Jefferson's on West 87th street in the Lenexa. Uh, how are you guys doing with ticket sales right now? It, it, do you have any uh, extras that you have to kind of give out and, and uh, where are you for the whole weekend as is with the bowling as well? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that we'll probably have a very limited number of walk-up tickets available on Thursday, probably less than 100. So if you're driving in from outside of Lawrence, I wouldn't sleep on, you know, assuming that there's going to be tickets available at the door. If you can get them on Wednesday or early Thursday, I would do it just to ensure you have a seat. Because with a star-studded lineup like the one we're about to get to here in a second, obviously tickets have gone quickly and it's been a very popular uh, build-up this year. The dinner is pretty much sold out. I think at, at the time of recording, we technically could take one more table, but honestly, we'd like not to just because you never know if somebody uh, 
doesn't show up from a celebrity standpoint. And as you know, you've seen me cover this thing for 16 years. We always try to recruit like three or four extra celebs because inevitably you have some some curveballs from time to time. Bowling, I think we have two lanes still open at Royal Crest Lanes. And that event is presented by McDonald's, catered by Jefferson's at Royal Crest on Saturday. That's really fun because you bowl one game with one celebrity. And then at the end of that game, you trade celebs with whatever lane is on your right. And uh, you get to bowl with somebody completely different. And that's the thing I love about this event beyond the obvious philanthropic side of the chance to raise life-changing dollars for these families is the fact that I don't think there's any other event even close that offers you the level of interactive opportunity and engagement with your favorite Jayhawk stars that offers the chance at autographs and selfies and stories and a chance to break bread with these guys at the Friday celebrity dinner. And this year for our dinner, as you know, as someone who's attended it in the past, um, we always have a theme. Last year's theme was a Monday night in April, and the five guys up on stage in the Rock Chalk Roundtable had all either played in or coached in a national championship game. This year's theme is big tradition, big personality. And we've got what we think are five of the best personalities in KU history. And Greg Gurley helping me ask the questions. We're actually going to take kind of a, a Tom Brady roast-esque vibe to this not that we're just teeing off on these dudes and not that it's crazy vulgar but there's going to be some jabbing going on especially with girly pushing buttons and pulling strings there's going to be some pitting against one another as you have greg ostertag up there opposite of hunter dickinson you have akib talib and jay will and christian brown i mean think about some of these personalities and then girly being the trick man <laughs> poking and prodding along the way i told them we'll play good cop bad cop Obviously, I'm too nice to be the bad cop. He's got to be the enforcer, right? But that's going to be a ton of fun. And then in the middle of that, we'll raise the paddle and hopefully raise you know more than six figures in that one setting alone. But uh, what's really cool is the last few years, as you well know, and let me point out, Derek has actually donated very generously, not just of his time and talents, but his resources too. In the last few years, we've been able to take this thing to a completely different trajectory in terms of the fundraising. And this year, we have an unprecedented gift from Kent and Missy McCarthy that's going to allow us, we hope, to have a record-setting year. So the beneficiary children, the Magnificent Seven that you listed off, they're going to get $25,000 right out the chute. Wow. Then we have a surprise that we'll announce on Friday that involves a parent fighting cancer. We'll talk more about that after Friday. But then last year, we started for the first time the Round Ball Benevolence Fund, which allowed us over the course of the following nine months during the athletic sports year at KU from fall sports through winter and spring to bring almost 20 more kids onto campus for a KU football, volleyball, basketball, women's basketball, baseball, or softball game. And then at the end of game day, they all get a $5,000 check. How cool is that? So when it's all said and done, based on this new three-day format and all the money we've been able to raise the last few years, we have a chance to impact almost 30 kids in a given year. A long way we've come since the original days of one or two kids, right? So, so immensely grateful for people like the McCarthys. But you don't have to be on the Kent and Missy McCarthy end of the spectrum. If you buy a $2 hot dog or a $15 ticket or a T-shirt or whatever. Maybe man, one of these hats. No, it's one of those hats. Exactly. Look cool like Derek. Get one of the hats. Um, you know, that's the thing about this, this particular cause. I mean, every penny goes back to these families. We scrap fight and claw to get everything donated for free. And if we can't get it for free, like the airline tickets, by golly, we're getting the want to get away fares and whatever <laughs> we can get to save every penny so we can stretch it across as many kids as possible. And, and that's the hustle and the, the, you know, the grit that goes into making this event special. There's about 12 to 15 board members that work year round and we don't have time to shout them all out by name, but these are all people that at some point, knew a previous beneficiary and were drawn to the game because of that specific kid. They had a chance to watch that year, be around the guys, be around the kids themselves, and they got hooked. And they have huge compassionate hearts, and they all have great talents. Many have special resources. We have a very uniquely equipped team that all brings something special to the, 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 the particular page. But the thing that I want to impress upon your viewers and listeners is – this is not a, well, let's ramp this thing up 30 days from now and put on three nights of events. We literally meet year-round, once a month, 
We literally, in the last 90 days leading up, I mean, this turns into a second full-time job for several of us to pull this off. So all the attaboys and girls and kudos to our board because a lot of people associate me with this event, and, and certainly I put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But there's you know 12 or 15 other people that are busting their tails to make this possible year-round. And let me tell you, it's an undertaking. So I hope folks enjoy it. I hope they have a blast Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know we're going to raise a ton of money, and I know you're going to walk away inspired when you meet these these incredible kids on Thursday. But I hope that uh, in addition to all of that, which is the reason for the season and celebrating these kids, we'll also give some shout outs to the people that are pulling the plow and doing the heavy lifting to make this thing possible because we've definitely got some, some big time, huge hearted people that work around the clock to pull this thing off each and every June. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about what's going on, the roster, how you can get involved, if you just want to donate, you can find out more, rockshockroundballclassic.com. I want to get into the rosters a little bit uh, coming up on the other side. First, got to take a quick break in the action with Locked on Jayhawks. This episode is brought to you by Game Time, making getting tickets to whether it's the NBA Finals, the Stanley Cup, Royals game going on right now. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer they get to tip off or first pitch. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA or MLB tickets. They have their last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater near you. You can even do their zone deal. Save even more when you choose. Choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats for you. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Also applies for concerts, comedy, theater. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, continuing on with Voice of the Jayhawks, Brian Haney. Again, Rock Chalk Round Ball Classic. Thursday is the game. It's going to be at Free State High School. Friday, you have the dinner event, and Saturday is the bowling. Again, you can go to rockchalkroundballclassic.com if you want to find out more info or try to get involved or go to the plenty of sites that you can go, 23rd Street Brewery in Lawrence, Johnny's in Topeka, a bunch of the Johnny's and Jefferson's in Topeka or in uh, Kansas City to get your tickets. Uh, so the roster is always super interesting, and, and I really do – think it's really cool when you see guys uh, like Greg Ostertag, who's going to be coaching this year, who maybe come for the first time in a while or, or come for maybe the first time ever, which I I want to say it was his either first time in a while or first time ever a couple of years ago when he came. And then they just love the event. They love what's being put on. They love what it's being put on for, and they just keep coming back. And obviously, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out in the schedule for some of these guys that we know have been regulars but I, I think that's cool when you see Greg Ostertag and and kind of building off of that to see that next wave of players I mean if you're a KU fan you probably have your favorite rock chalk round ball classic roster you've been to based on you know what what your favorite team was or what your favorite era of KU basketball was and so it, it can be different every year because every year is star studded and loaded with the roster but I think what's what's maybe the most unique about this year's roster, I, I don't know. Have we ever had this many guys who had just graduated within the last, whatever, two years, three years from the program? It, it feels like that number is higher than most years. Completely agree. And I think you're out of something. We have six first-timers in this year's game. For the 2022 national title team in particular, this feels like a special reunion weekend because with the exception of Remy Martin – and Jalen uh, coleman Lands, we've got just about everybody that played meaningful minutes in that one. Ochai, CB, obviously Jalen will be there. Mitch Lightfoot, David McCormick, Chris Tehan, Dewan and KJ will be a part of some of the festivities later in the weekend for obvious reasons they can't play in the Thursday game. But, you know, the who's who of that team will all be there, which is really special. And then, you know, 2018, that Final Four run, which I still call it a Final Four because we were in San Antonio. <laughs> it happened. Uh, Devontae Graham, Malik Newman, Yudoka Azabuki, Silvio De Sosa, all these guys are going to be a part of it. Sfi's actually been with us every single year, but – a little occupied this week with the Celtics, I understand. He's got a good excuse to not be there. But I think the point you hit on is a big one, that when guys come for the first time 
and the light kind of comes on. They realize the magnitude of their position of influence, the impact that they can have. It's neat to see guys like Devontae Graham realize how special this weekend can be, and then they come back every single year since. Ben McLemore was that way for a long time. This was an event that really pulled on his heartstrings. He had a connection with a previous beneficiary that went all the way to Sports Center in the top 10, and so he became a huge contributor. And uh, so the point is, with this new wave of, of Jay Will and obviously Ochai and Christian Brown, David McCormick, some of these guys, Grady Dick, it's my hope that we see some similar breakthroughs, not just in the action on the floor, they've broken through there, but breakthroughs in connecting with some of the beneficiary kids, having a blast, connecting with the fans and thinking, you know what, I'm going to make it a priority to be back in Lawrence once a year at least, but make sure this third weekend in June every year is circled because that's that's truly special when you have those types of breakthrough moments. That's been the case five or six years ago with Fee and Devante. Now we're hoping this next rookie class, round ball rookie class that is, uh, ends up having a breakthrough weekend as well. Uh, okay, I don't know if this guy's a rookie to the round ball. He certainly uh, isn't the same age as those other guys, but – as, as much as a lot of people are going to be super excited to see Christian Brown, and I guess that's kind of the opposite of the Sfi one. Last year he wasn't able to make it because of the uh, NBA Finals. This year, I right. guess, fortunately, obviously, you know, you would like to see him go further, but it worked out there. Has Julian Wright been in this event before? Because for me personally, I don't think I've seen him in the event, and I'm super excited to see yeah. him in the event. This might be his third game, but it's been okay. quite a while, and uh, he's making a lot of effort to be here couple recent seasons he wasn't able to come because of the big three. There have been some obvious uh, mm -hmm. other summertime events that have been created after round ball was. Obviously, the uh, you know the later in the summertime event that you get with the, uh, yeah, the TBT. players with the mm -hmm. TBT in July, the big three obviously in June sometimes has cost us. But we started this thing back in 2009, and we strategically placed it in the middle of Bill Self's camp schedule – because candidly, we thought we could pull some guys, some alumni players that would come back for Bill Self's camp. Very humbly speaking, for the last 13 or 14 years, let's call it like it is, they come back for round ball and a couple might maybe make their way over to camp. But this organization is flying them in. We're putting them up. We're putting on this big weekend. And so humbly speaking, we're excited to kind of see that juxtaposition and the turning of tables. And guys like Julian Wright, who played overseas professionally after being with the Pelicans for a while, and then he's had some big three commitments. He's just not been able to be there. But a great personality. It's a shame that he's got to leave after Thursday because you might recall during his playing days, there were articles written about what a great bowler he was. Mm -hmm. Back when J-Bowl was a thing on campus, between classes he would go down and bowl all the time. He would crush it at the Round Bowl Classic on Saturday, which, by the way, our partners at Jayhawk Trophy – have given us – can I say badass on the Locked On podcast? Oh, yeah, go for it. The most badass celebrity trophy you've ever seen. It's probably like a $300 trophy. Like, it's it's legit. They it's usually like, deliver, yeah. It's better than what they pass out for winning the Big 12 tournament. I know that. <laughs> and so the celebrity bowler is going to get this thing. And uh, Julian would have been the leader in the clubhouse. But now I understand Grady Dick's a pretty good bowler. Uh, Travis Relaford and Sharon Collins always take it seriously. We'll see. But – uh Point is, Julian is coming back for one night only. Hopefully, future years we can get him back for the full weekend. But he's one of my favorite personalities and definitely one of those uh, it's been a while type guys, throwback guys to bring back in the mix. Yeah, I think that'll be uh, really cool. So if you if you had to pick someone right now, I guess, I don't know, a couple guys on the short list that's going to lead the way in scoring for the game itself on Thursday. I mean, you mentioned some of the top bowlers possibly, but what about the game? That is such a hard question, Derek, because with this new wave of rookies that you brought up, yeah. also has some trepidation of do I play in this or do I just come and take selfies and sign autographs, which has great value. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. But, but I thought Doak was going to do that last year, and he ended up having yep. a billion dunks. He did. He did. And and Doak this year, I'm pretty convinced, is not going to play uh, you know, based on some, some offseason stuff that, that he's taken on. But um, – there are four or five guys that have hinted at wanting to just coach, but believe me, when the lights are on and the popcorn's popping and guys like Jalen Wilson and Ochai Abaji are out there playing and they've promised us they will play, does Grady Dick or Christian Brown or David McCormick 
who started the night with a coach's polo on, suddenly ripped that puppy off, put on the jersey, and get in the game. Any good event director would make sure you have a jersey ready just in case. And I've done my homework. I've planted some subtle hints. I've I've talked to people around these players. What would it take to get them on event night to kind of come out of their shell a little bit? And there's a chance I think we'll see more than just J. Will and Ochai. But here's the thing. J. Will and Ochai might only go for the first 10 minutes, and they may cede the rest of the night to somebody else. And so uh, the joke I've been making this week is I've got probably six 23-year-old, multimillionaire, absolutely chiseled physique, 23-year-old assistant coaches. <laughs> and, and, and the guys that are going to log the bulk of the minutes are the middle-aged dudes that probably haven't been hitting the Peloton in a while. And I don't say that to detract ticket sales or anything. As you know, this is a lighthearted event mm -hmm. and you get all, all types. But uh, I think the guy that winds up the leading scorer will probably be whoever is on the floor for the most minutes. And it's funny, Tyrell Reed, even at 35, 36 years old, he keeps downplaying it because I keep hinting when I see him passing. He's not the floor. I'm like, hey, bud, I need 30 points out of you on yeah. Thursday night. He's, he's like, before. he's like, you might get three out of me. And I said, dude, he, I don't know if you know this about him. I'm sure you do. He records himself dunking a basketball on his birthday every single year. No, I didn't know that. Kind of proof to himself that mm -hmm. he hasn't lost a step. It's a challenge each year with each passing year that he can still dunk. I'm going to start that tradition with a trampoline for my next birthday on an eight-foot goal because I never was able to dunk, but he still does it on a 10-foot goal without any assistance. I think Tyrell could be a sleeper, and that sounds crazy when Ochai and Jay Will are going to log real minutes, but you never know. If, if Jay Will plays a normal workload, he's my pick, but I really don't know how it's going to go. It, it's kind of like uh, trying to bet on an NBA preseason game or, mm -hmm. or, or NFL where the, where the starters get the first two series and then they're watching the rest of the night. I don't know how it's going to go down. So your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned with David McCormick being a coach. I know in the past you did the recreation of the Mario Chalmers shot. I bet you you could goad him yeah. into doing into doing a hook shot for you, maybe yes. in the paint. You know, I, I love that idea. I had not thought of that. That's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we're picking him up at the airport tomorrow. We may have to, uh, in our forty-five minute drive back, plant that seed. See what he thinks. There you go. All right, uh, we're going to finish up locked on Jayhawks here. Just just talking a little bit more about the event and the recipients. I'm back with Locked On Jayhawks to finish up here. Thank you to the voice of Jayhawks, Brian Haney, coming on here. So, again, the, the recipients that are with us for this, Azel Bryant, Calvin Smith, Isaac Reynolds, Kira Whiting, Lucas Kraminga, Owen Ragsdale, Rowdy Campbell. Those are the children that are uh, going through some tough times right now, and, and we can certainly be a help both in terms of the financial outlet from their family and in terms of putting a smile on their face and a smile on their family's face. So again, rockchalkroundballclassic.com is where you can go for that. You can learn more where you can get tickets about donating, about getting involved with some of the other events about, I don't know if you own a business doing something to sponsor. Brian talked about, you know, some of the, the free stuff that helps them out avoid costs. So if you can help with any of that, so Brian, I guess just overarching, you know, we, we don't, maybe have time to get into each story for each individual kid, but what can you tell us about this magnificent seven, the magnificent seven this year? Well, I think like uh, the common denominator of a lot of our previous beneficiaries, you've got kids that are facing unbelievably daunting circumstances. And yet if you spend 10 minutes with them on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, you'll see there's a light that shines brightly inside of each of these kids. And they just want to feel like a normal kid that's not being hooked up to a bunch of machines, poked or prodded or have to deal with their hair falling out because they're going through radiation or chemotherapy or something. And that's what I love about this event. For one night, they're the stars of the show and they're not thinking about that kind of stuff. But in the uh, media day setting that we had with five of the seven that were able to be there, the other two were undergoing treatment at the time. We had that at Creative One, who's one of our Kansas City media partners, and they're fabulous. And it was just so neat to see the personalities of these kids, to see them light up, you know, getting a chance to, to dress up a bit and be in front of the camera and strike a pose. And, and we, we always have a hype video where we have smoke blowing and the rock music's blaring and we have them flex their biceps or make a pose. And they're shy at first, but then the personality starts to come out. And it's my hope that we have that personality breakthrough moment on Thursday night when we form the player tunnel of 40 players and the 
the the young folks get to come running through our beneficiary kids. Last year, you might recall, uh, we had Nolan Anderson, Nolan the Noble from Topeka, a little little tiny guy, bless his heart, battling cancer. He had a heart defect. He was also born with Down syndrome. But I'll tell you what, it's all up with this kid. I mean, his personality is through the roof. His energy, his infectious positivity, and he came bolting through that tunnel with the biggest smile you've ever seen, and he was just having the time of his life. I promise you there's going to be a moment like that on Thursday, and no matter what happens over the next 40 minutes in the game, the show will be stolen before the ball is even tipped off. That's always the highlight of the weekend. We can't wait for it. But I will give you this last teaser without too many juicy details. There will be something that happens in the first half that has never happened in the illustrious 16-year history of our game. We've had a lot of interesting things unfold. We've had sports center anchors. We've had welterweight champions. We've had two contestants on Survivor. We've had all kinds of shenanigans. We gave away a car at one point to a kid whose dying wish was to take a drive down the Highway 1 California coastline that you used to call home. But we've never had this happen. So stay in your seats at the first timeout. If you got an inkling to go to the bathroom, just hold it. You're not going to want to miss this, all right? That's all I can tell you. Stay in your seats. Keep your ears open and your eyes on the floor. A memorable moment will happen when the ball is not put in play, but rather there's a timeout on the floor. There's your tease. Love it. And, uh, you know, as the Jimmy V quote, if you laugh, you think, you cry, that's a full day. You can have a full day at the Rock Chalk Round Ball Classic. Brian, I appreciate the time so much. Good luck with the festivities this week and, and putting everything on, man. Man, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your friendship and your support over the years. Thrilled to see the success of this Locked On podcast and uh, to see the Jayhawk following that you built here. It's going to be a special year to be a Jayhawk, that's for sure. And hopefully these uh, next three days kick off what's going to be an amazing 12 months in Jayhawk Nation. Thanks again, Derek. He's voice of the Jayhawks, Brian Haney. That'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. We'll be back at you later this week for a Football Friday episode of the show. Till then, keep it locked in right here with Locked on Jayhawks anywhere you get your podcast and on our YouTube page.